Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Remember, our Lord said, I will build my church. Amen. Past couple weeks, we've been on the church's organization. We've looked at oneness. We've looked at order and unity. Yes, sir. This morning, I want us to try to deal with God's eternal purpose. Yes, sir. The church's organization, God's eternal purpose. Now, I'll begin in Ephesians chapter 1. I will read for this morning the first six verses. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, Amen. having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. As I said to you over the past couple weeks, when we think about the church's organization, its oneness, its order and unity, we see in the church that order, yes, that structure, yes. that arrangement. Christ in building the church has built, and I will even say is still building, I believe today, that church. But he's doing it according to the eternal purpose of God. Amen. I say this with reverence. I don't mean to be flippant. God Almighty has erected a blueprint. And that blueprint is being followed to the T. Yes, sir. In this chapter, that is Ephesians chapter 1, Paul declares the order, the structure, the arrangement of the eternal purpose of the triune God concerning the church. This epistle, and even this chapter, is not a systematic theology to seminary students. It has system to it. Yes, sir. But it is not a systematic theology written to seminary students. That's right. As a matter of fact, as one man pointed out, this epistle is written to many who were probably slaves yep. of the lower classes. Yep. Some who may or may not have, we don't know for sure, but some maybe could not even read and write. Exactly. Yep. Uneducated men and women when it came to the Greek philosophies and all the instruction of the world of that day. Thus Paul, this not being some systematic theology to seminary students, Paul does not start at the beginning and work his way down. In other words, he doesn't begin at point A and then go to point B and then go to point C and so forth and so on. This is a letter to saints. Amen. That's right. That's right. This is a letter to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Amen. He begins this letter that way, right? The Spirit of God moved Paul to declare his audience before he even proceeds any further in his instruction, right? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and as though that even needs explanation. Yet because we are so finite and fallible, he says, by the will of God. Amen. 
That's right. That's why I am what I am as an apostle, by the will of God. Amen. One of the first statements he makes as to his position and place in the body of Christ, in the church, is what? By the will of God. Exactly. To who? The saints. That's the only people he's writing to. That's right. Saints. This epistle is not to the world to inform them of God's wonderful purpose he has for their lives. This epistle is declaring God Almighty's eternal purpose for how he will build his church Amen. to the saints and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. These are not two different classes of Christians, but the same people. That's right. The same people. It's a letter to saints. It's a letter to the faithful in Christ Jesus. In other words, I'm writing, Paul says, to the people set apart by God and set apart unto God. That's what the word saint means. Yes, sir. To be a saint, you do not have to work a miracle. No. You have to be a miracle of God's grace. Amen. That's it. Rome says you work a miracle, and I don't know what the other standards are. It has nothing to do with being a saint. The word saint is brought from the... Greek word, which means to set apart. A set apart person. Yes, that's right. And the preponderant testimony of Scripture is this. We are set apart by God, and we are set apart unto God. Amen. A lot of people don't mind being set apart. They just want to be set apart unto something other than God. A lot of people don't, they don't mind being a saint if it means I can be a saint in my own way. Job pointed that out quite ably this morning. Those who are saints are saints by God Almighty's ordained way. Amen. No one else is saints. That's right. No one else is saints. So it's the people set apart by God and set apart unto God. A people, and I can say and, and a people in whom faith in Christ, that is faith in Christ is real. And thus, these people are actively engaged in believing Christ. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. But it's not enough just to leave it laying there. And to the faithful, where? Yeah. In Christ Jesus. Amen. There are thousands that are faithful to religion. Oh, yeah. Paul's not writing to them. Exactly. There are thousands that are faithful to their own particular brand of doctrine or their denomination. Yeah. Paul's not writing to them. Yes, He's writing to those who are saints, and they are described as what? To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Faithful means faith is real. It's active. Yes, sir. They participate in this thing. That's right. It's a part of who they are. It's not just how they think. It's a part of who they are. Thus, they, these people are actively engaged in believing Christ. But I ask the question. I think it's this implied question, but how, Paul would say, like, how did I get here and how did you get there? Yeah. Remember who Paul was? Yeah. A hater of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And yet now he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. How did he get there? Yes, How did he get to that condition or that state yeah. or that position? Whichever way you want to look at it or look at it all. These people at Ephesus were the worshipers of an image that had multiple breasts upon its chest. A god of fertility with full of orgies and all sexual corruption. That's what Ephesus was. Yes, sir. And yet, Paul calls these people, at least some of them, what? Saints. That's right. In the faithful in Christ Jesus. How did they get to that? Exactly. How did they go from being worshipers of Diana? Great is the goddess Diana. And they screamed it for hours. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Was it three hours? I forget. What was it? Hours. <laughs> Great is Diana of the Ephesians. This big statue. How did these people get to be saints and faithful in Christ Jesus? Amen. I ask you, how did you get to be a saint yeah. and faithful in Christ Jesus? Look at your background. Exactly. Look at where you came from. Yeah. 
Right. Look at what, where your devotions and your love was at one time. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah. Mm. Immediately then, Paul, being moved by the Spirit of God, begins to ascend. He begins to ascend. He begins to ascend toward the source of this condition of sanctity and faith. Yes, sir. You see it? He doesn't begin up there. He begins with himself, who he is, yep. what he is now, and who they are. Yeah. Okay. And it's the question, how did it get there? Exactly. Paul now immediately begins to ascend up toward the source of this condition. Yes, it's ascending order, not descending. We'll see the order here, but it's ascending order, not descending. He's not starting at the beginning and working his way down. He started here where they were, and now is beginning to work his way back up. You see it? If you don't see that, you'll become confused here. Why the blessing before the election? Why the election before the predestination and so forth and so on? The reason is he's now ascending back up to the throne. Yeah. It's ascending order, not descending. So again, I ask, how did this come to be? Yeah. Saul of Tarsus, yeah. now an apostle of Jesus Christ so, by the will of God. But that doesn't answer a whole lot, does it? It's not a lot of detail, is it? It's enough. If we weren't so rebellious and so thick-headed and so hard-hearted, it ought to be enough. Yes, sir. When he calls someone saints and faithful in Christ Jesus, that ought to bow us down into the dust before God Almighty. But even when we're bowed down and our pride is crushed, every particle cries out with pride against God. You're right. So what's Paul do? He says, here, I'm going to define to you how you got to be where you are as saints and faithful in Christ Jesus. Let us now ascend up to the source. Immediately, number one, the first thing Paul does is lavish praise on him from whom these blessings flow. Yeah. Blessed be the God. He doesn't start with God's blessings to us. The first thing he does is says, let's stop and praise God. Amen. You see it? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who... Hath. Do you see that? The Father of Christ is the source. That's what it is. Amen. The Father of Christ yeah. is the source. God the Father is the source of our blessing. We should then in turn do what? Bless him. Blessed be. Blessed be. But in religion today, in pseudo-Christianity today, in the majority of professing Christians today, where do they always want to begin? With their self as the source. Rather than saying, okay, here I am by an act of God, and then ascending up to see the source, they stay where they are and say, I made myself this way. Oh, yeah. You're right. They can call it all kinds of things. They call it divine spark. That's a lie. You're right. They can call it free will. That's a lie. You're right. You're right. They can call it works. That's a lie. Amen. It's a lie. Paul lavishes praise on him from whom this blessing flows. And it's enough just to say, blessed be God. Yeah. Huh? Because... Mason, if we simply said, I, all we're supposed to do is praise God, then we just go on with words and words and words. Yeah. He lavishes praise on him by this simple yet profound statement. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Those set apart as saints... And believing, that's the faithful in Christ Jesus. Those set apart and believing Christ are the recipients of the blessings. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. You see, he's beginning to ascend up now. Here I am. I'm, a, I'm an apostle by the will of God. You're saints. You're the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now we praise God for that. 
Yes, sir. We praise God for that because from him comes our blessed state. Yes, sir. You see it? Those set apart and believing Christ are the recipients of the blessed who hath blessed that little word. Us. Amen. No, listen to me, no spiritual blessing is withheld from those set apart and believing. Right. Now you got the right order now. Yeah. You usually read this, you say, well, blessed us, so that means he blessed us before the foundation of the world. No, you're trying to start at the top and work your way down. We're at the bottom here, where we are now, saints and believing. Yep. Now we're working our way back up. Who is he blessed here? The saints and the faithful in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. You see it? Yeah. This is the ascending order. Somebody said, well, but God did that before the world began. Yes, he did. But Paul is defining for us how we got to where we are. Amen. Right now. That's right. You weren't born a saint. That's exactly right. You weren't born faithful in Christ Jesus. That's exactly right. I'll tell you that right now without apology. And neither was I. Amen. Neither was I. That's right. No spiritual blessing is withheld from those set apart and believing because to be set apart and believing are two of the blessings. Yeah, that's right. There you go. They're two of the very blessings he's talking about. Yes, sir. Exactly. In other words, spiritual life, where'd that come from? God. Amen. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. A spiritual faith, where'd that come from? God. Repentance, is that necessary? Oh, yeah, it's necessary. Where'd that come from? That come from God. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does he say? Who hath blessed us? Who's the us? Yeah. Somebody says the elect. He ain't got there yet. That's Hang on just a minute. He's talking to saints and the faithful in Christ Jesus. That's right. See, we're ascending up. Yeah. God's grace, God's peace, God's salvation, etc., 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 God has blessed us with all of it. Amen. How is it that these blessings are ours? Paul now keeps going up. You see? Yes, sir. He keeps ascending further. Next, Paul acknowledges the where, the when, and the why. Which hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as. You see that? That's not there by mistake. Paul's not just trying to wax eloquent. He's saying now there's a source from which all these blessings are yours. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God the Father chose us in Christ. That's where. Yes, There's the realm in which he chose us. Yes, if you think about in Christ in this context, think of Christ as your representative. Yeah. He is God's elect one. Yes. He's the one that's chosen based solely upon who he is. Amen. That's right. And what he would do. Yeah. He's chosen Joe for that purpose. Yes, sir. He's chosen because of that purpose. Where were we chosen? In him. Do you see it? In him. There's the where. There's the realm. God the Father chose us. Where? In Christ. Here's the when. Before we ever even existed. Yeah. Right? Before the foundation of the world. And here's the why. Is there a why? Sure there's a why. That we should be. Do you see it? He's blessed us how according as he chose us. In Christ. In him. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Not because we would be, but that we would be. Amen. Exactly. Now, it's that simple, but it's yet that profound and that much to change it just that much is to pervert the gospel of God. Yeah. Is to pervert the eternal purpose of God. Well, he chose us because we would be. No. He chose us to be. Amen. Now, as a matter of fact, some people have problem with that word should. Yeah. 
Because in our day it's used as hope so or maybe so or wish so. The old English word should does not have that meaning. But as a matter of fact, if you actually literally translated the Greek, it is for us to be. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, we're sending up, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, for us to be holy and without blame before him in love. Our holy and unblemished state is even before God. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, that's the only place it matters. Exactly. You look at me, you ain't going to see that. That's right. That's it. Do you know that? You look at me, you won't see me as holy and unblemished. That's right. Will they, Penny? <laughs> no, they won't. Now, I know y'all think I'm a pretty good fella. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we don't even have visitors where that even really makes much of a difference, does it? The whole point is before him. Amen. Because he's the one that it matters. Yep. If I don't stand holy and without blemish before him in love, you know what's going to happen? I will perish. Exactly. No matter what men and women may think of me, the question is, how does God see me? Yeah. Yeah. But he chose for me to be that way. Holy and without blemish. And that is a good way to look at it. Yeah. As one pointed out, it has to do here with both inwardly and outwardly. Exactly. In other words, God's not hiding something from himself. Yeah. God knows what we really are by nature. Yes, sir. But God Almighty chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. And therefore, yeah. it is to be for us before him. What? Holy. Yeah. And without blame, without blemish before him. How? In love. Now, if you don't love Christ, you got no right to claim a part of the election. Amen. That's right. And men argue about where the love should be. The love is in his people. Yeah. Love for Christ, love for his gospel, and love for others who love Christ and love his gospel. Yes, sir. He chose us to love him. Yes, sir. Exactly. Not just to go to heaven. Everybody said, well, you believe God chose some to go to heaven, some to go to hell. I believe God chose the people to love Christ. Yes, sir. To believe him, to rest in him. That's the order. That's the structure. That's the arrangement. You're not going to get the glory if you don't love Christ. Exactly. I don't care how much you claim God chose you. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Because why? According, how's here's our, here's our, here is how he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. What does scripture say? Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. As a matter of fact, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Yes, sir. But aren't you glad love is a fruit of the Spirit? It's not something you've got to come up with. It's something that God gives you. <laughs> he just makes you that way, David. You can't help but love God's people. Why? We're not lovable. We're not lovable. I mean, when my wife tells me I love you, I think, something wrong with you. You know? You, know, I mean, you ask them, why do you love me? You're setting them up. Quit doing that. Why do you love me? I really don't know. <laughs> well, let's be honest. Most of what we love is because we know they're just like we are. Yeah. Isn't it true? Yeah. But real love's based in Christ and based upon what he's done for us by his grace. Yes, sir. Mm, holy and unblemished state before him. That's yeah. so amazing. Three things quickly on this. This the, the the where, the when, and there's the why. Why? Why? Why did he choose us in Christ before the world began? That we should be. Holy. Not because we would be. That we should be. You see it? Three things. Only the chosen are blessed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that what this teaches? We're sending up now. Yeah. We're sending up. Only the chosen are blessed. But thank God, all the chosen are blessed. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. 
When we compare ourselves among ourselves, some of us are probably better than others. But it's not based on that. It's according as he chose us in him that we should be. You see it? Only the chosen are blessed, but thank God all the chosen are blessed. Thus, here's the third thing, the blessed are chosen. Did God give you faith? That means he chose you. You see it? Yes, sir. Has he set you apart in Christ to love Christ, to love his gospel, to love his people? God chose you before the foundation of the world did. Now, if you don't believe, if you don't love, you got no reason to claim it or think it of yourselves. But if you do, you have all the reason in the world. Paul says, beloved, knowing your election of God. Why? Because our gospel laid hold of you. Yes, sir. And it drew you out from where you were and drew you unto us and unto the Lord. And that's basically my paraphrasing of what Paul's saying there. He said, you became followers of us and of the Lord. Yes, sir. Now, don't leave out either one of those things. That's right. A lot of people want to follow the Lord and ain't worried about being with God's people. You're mixed, mixed up in your mind. Yes. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm I'm being honest with your soul and my soul. You're mixed up in your mind. When God calls you out of them, you become a part of us. And if you don't love to be a part of us, you ain't a part of us. Period. Well, what are you saying? Exactly what I just said. What do you mean? Exactly what I just said. Because God's blessed the believing saints, saints who believe. Either way, and he's blessed them. What, with all spiritual blessings? Yes, sir. And he chose us how to be before him holy and without blame before him how? In love. <laughs> Thus, the blessed are chosen. Yes, chosen to be blessed. <laughs> Isn't that what it says? Yes, sir. We're still ascending up. But now... Now, Paul sets our hearts and minds square (coughs) before God's eternal reason for our election. You know there's a reason for our election? Yes, sir. Having predestinated. So in the order, not in the mind of God now, but in the order as Paul's ascending, what now is next? Having predestinated. Predestination precedes election. In the order. That's what it says, says, doesn't it? Look, he he blessed you. You're you're a saint. You're faithful in Christ Jesus. And that's true because God blessed you with all you needed. Every every spiritual blessing you needed, God gave it to you. And why did he do that? Or how did he do it? According as he chose you. And he chose you to be holy without blame before him in love. But what's that based upon? His predestinating purpose. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Most people want to think, well, election's at the forefront. No, predestination is at the forefront. Our destiny, this is simply, simply put, our destiny was predetermined by God beforehand. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Our election flows from that. So away with this, God looked into the future and seen what you would do. No, God chose for you to be adopted. How? Even then, by Jesus Christ to himself. Who's doing all the work there? God, the triune God is. Do you see it? You don't have to go to all, well, I need to find out what does it say in this passage. And No, it's all right here. As we ascend up to the throne, how did we get to where we are right now? Let us go up to the throne. And we'll see the order, the structure. God chose you because he predestinated you to be his son. Yes, sir. That's what it says. Our destiny was predetermined by God beforehand. Now, there is no other meaning to the word predestinate. It's not pre-confirm. It's predestinate. The destiny was determined by God beforehand. The destiny is defined to be placed as a son. And the way it's done, guaranteed, is by Jesus Christ to himself. Amen. 
And that's even according to the good pleasure of His will. Amen. So I'm here to say, if you're believing in free will, you're not believing the gospel of God. You're right. That's exactly right. Man's will's not in here anywhere. That's right. You're right. Whose will is not only predominant, but only there. Yeah. God's will. Yeah. Paul said, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Now, in your saints, yeah. and you believe in Christ Jesus. Now, let me show you how you got there. There you go. Let's go up. Let's go up. We're ascending up. We're actually starting at point B or C or D, and now we're working way, way back, David, to point A. Now we're at point A. Our destiny was adoption. Yes, sir. That was our destiny. And who yeah. destined us? Yeah. A having predestined. Who, who did this having predestined? God did it. Yes, sir. By Jesus Christ to himself. This destiny hinged on, was an independent, and was dependent upon who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Yep. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Paul now has completed his ascension as we see God on the throne. Now we're back. We're right back to the beginning. Whenever that, we will say a bit, you know, God hath from the beginning. Right here it is, Mason. There's the beginning, if we can call it beginning, as Scripture does. Paul now has completed our, this ascension, and we stand before the very throne of God, and we hear Paul crying out with clear, unadulterated language, God is doing all of this according to his will. Amen. And it's to assure praise to himself. Amen. By doing it all himself, and assured it all himself. Yes. You see it? That's what that we... No, no, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his what? Grace. Amen. Wherein he hath made us accepted, highly favored. Yes, sir. Same word that was used to Mary when she said, you're highly favored. Yeah, there you go. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted. Where? In the beloved. Amen. You're not even accepted in your repentance. Those are the blessings that flow from That's the right. source. Yes, You're not accepted in your faith. That's a blessing that flows from the source. You're getting it all mixed up. Yeah. When you see where you are now by God's grace, go all the way back to the source, the throne of God. And God Almighty did it to bring praise to the glory, to bring the, to, that we might be to the praise of the glory of his grace. So what is the order of God's eternal purpose in these verses? Top down. God was pleased to bring praise to himself. Amen. That's where it started. Yes, sir. That's the first thing in the order. Yeah. That's the first thing. God was pleased to bring praise to himself. Yeah. And to bring praise to the glory of his grace. There's number one. There you go. In this text. There's number one. Number two. God predestinated a people to adoption for that end. Why? To bring praise to the glory of his grace. Amen. The predestinated were chosen in Christ for them to be holy and without blame before him in love. The chosen are blessed with everything they need spiritually. Yes, sir. Whatever you need, God's going to give it to you. Yea, in Christ he has given it to you. Amen. You, you, and I may preach on this sometime. You, you remember Jacob's cup? Yeah. Was in Benjamin's was in Benjamin's sack? There are a lot of things in this world we think, boy, why, that can't be a blessing. Let me tell you something. If you're one of God's, if he predestinated you to be to the praise of the glory of his grace, even Joseph's cup in your sack is a blessing. That's right. Huh? Sorry. You remember when they first opened up that sack? Yeah. And all of a sudden Joseph's cup rolled out, we might say. Yeah. They were frightened to death. That's yeah. exactly right. But you know what that cup was in there for? Yeah. To bring Benjamin back. That's right. And to guarantee they would be back. That's right. Huh? Joseph's cup hidden in your sacks, a blessing. It's there even when you don't know it. Amen. Huh? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's in your possession even when you don't know it because it's in your sack. There you go. Yes, sir. But eventually, 
God will show it to you. You'll open the lid on that sack and go to digging in that grain and say, boy, look at this grain. And all of a sudden, a cup will roll out and it'll scare the living bejeebies out of you. But then you'll realize this is in the end. You're right. This is a good thing. <laughs> this is a good thing. Hmm. The chosen are blessed with everything they need spiritually. We're working our way back down now. The three predominant blessings mentioned here are what? Sanctification, faith, and love. Yes, sir. That's the three predominant blessings mentioned here. Sanctification, faith, and love. And Christ is the sum and substance of all these things. Amen. Yes, sir. That's where it's at. We, we've traveled, we've ascended up. Yeah. And now I'm just kind of re just turn it around to come right back down. That's why we are where we are now. But next time, when we look at the church's organization, we'll look at the next several verses. There is gospel conversion. Yes, sir. It's just as much a part of this as the first six verses. Yes, sir. That's right. And there is order to it. Yes, there is. Yeah. Huh? Well, let's just read it. Just, just for this, for the sake of time, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory. He keeps saying that. Notice yes, that. Because that's back. He keeps kind of David hopping back up to the throne and saying, don't forget this. That's right. It's all about praise. Why did God do all that? To praise himself. Yes, sir. To bring glory to himself. But look, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted after that. You see it? That's the order. It, you, can't mix, you can't mix that up. There you go. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed. You can't mix that up. That's right. You can't twist it around. After that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that is the earnest of your inheritance. Yeah. You see it? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. And then he just, it's just like you've got to go right back up again unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Hmm? And there's an order here. Either God saved you according to this arrangement or you're not saved. There you go. Either God saved me according to this arrangement yes. or I'm not saved. That's it. That's you don't be like Cain, Joe, and pick how you want it to be done. Exactly. It's done this way or it ain't done at all. You see what I'm saying? That's how important it is. How important it is. Father, not only teach us these things, Lord, we, we do desire, pray for ourselves and for others that the eyes of our understanding and being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of your calling. But God, that it's real for us and in us, that it's real. God bless us with this truth and I ask in Christ's name, amen.